There a platelet. Here a platelet. Platelets everywhere. Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie and welcome to HEMED. So today, let's say we have a CBC with a WBC of 24, the RBC parameters are within their reference ranges, and the platelets are 2100 with an MPV of 13.5. The blood film looks like this a sea of platelets, and some of them large and giant. As a note for those of you new to the microscope, having a platelet count over 1,000 is very noticeable, and you can tell even without the CBC results. This is a normal platelet blood film, and here is one with a count over 2,000. As I scan the slide, I see a megakaryocyte fragment, which looks like a ginormous platelet that may have budding. Also, there might be a micromaker karyocyte. The differential, given in absolute values, has an 18 neutrophils, a 3.6 lymphocytes, 0.72 monocytes, 0.36 eosinophils, 0.12 basophils, 0.72 metamyelocytes, and 0.48 myelocytes. So to summarize, we have a high WBC count, normal RBC parameters, and a ridiculously high platelet count. The MPV is above the reference range, therefore some of these platelets are large or even giant. The megakaryocytic fragment and micromegakaryocyte are worrisome. The differential has a neutrophilia with a slight left shift. Based on this information, at baseline, we are looking at what is likely a myeloproliferative neoplasm, more specifically, essential thrombocythemia, also known as ET, primary thrombocytosis, idiopathic thrombocytosis, or hemorrhagic thrombocythemia. ET is relatively rare, with cases occurring in 0.6 to 2.5 out of 100,000 people. The primary incident group is patients between 50 and 60 years of age, either gender, and a second incident group happens between 20 and 30 years, usually in females. Patients commonly present with thrombosis, which is when the body clots without an injury, most likely due to the sheer number of platelets bumping into each other and starting the platelet activation process. Or they present with the other end of the spectrum and have minor bleeding. The typical ET patient will have a platelet result between 1,000 and 5,000 as it mainly affects the megakaryocytic lineage. There may be giant and bizarre platelets and possibly platelet clumps on the slide. Micromegakaryocytes or megakaryocytic fragments can also be present in the peripheral blood. There may be anemia, but that is usually due to the associated bleeding. There is most often a leukocytosis with a WBC count between 22 and 40, with occasional metamyelocytes and myelocytes. There are a few conditions associated with thrombocytosis, such as other myeloproliferative neoplasms and disorders where thrombocytosis is secondary, so distinguishing ET from them is needed. All of these requirements must be met for a patient to be diagnosed with essential thrombocythemia. One, sustained platelet count greater than or equal to 450. Two, megakaryocyte proliferation with large and mature megakaryocytes with little to no change in the neutrophils or red cell maturation in the bone marrow. Three, the World Health Organization criteria for CML, polycythemia vera, primary myelofibrosis, MDS, or other myeloid neoplasms are not met. Four, presence of an acquired pathogenic mutation such as JAK2, V617F, or other clonal markers. Five, no evidence of a reactive thrombocytosis and normal iron stores. Patients with ET have a 10-year survival rate of approximately 76 to 89%. Occasionally, the disease transforms into acute myeloid leukemia or primary myelofibrosis. So today, we learned about essential thrombocythemia, how it looks on the slide, and the associated CBC result. Stay tuned for future videos on other myeloproliferative neoplasms. So subscribe to be kept in the loop. Comment below if you have any questions, learn something new, or like these types of videos. Thank you for watching. Until next time.